The Younger Dryas represents a time where, as the climate was warming towards the end of the last ice age, something happened around 12,800 years ago which took the planet back to near glacial conditions for over a millennia until about 11,600 years ago when the climate returned to steadily warming again. The marking of the end of the Younger Dryas period was also particularly abrupt, as ice core samples show, for example, that Greenland's temperatures rose 10 degrees Celsius in only a decade, as well as various other records displaying these abrupt shifts on other continents. For a long time, it wasn't known what could have kick-started the Younger Dryas. The impact hypothesis first came about in 2007 by Alan West, a retired geophysicist, who with a team of researchers took a closer look at about two dozen archaeological sites across North America, showing a boundary layer of sediments dating to the onset of the Younger Dryas, and about half a dozen of those sites also had a thin layer of organic-rich sediments called black mats immediately overlying the boundary layer. These boundary layers contain things like tiny round magnetised grains called microspherules, which form when a material is heated and rapidly cooled. Also, other magnetised grains of sediment, carbon spherules, hollow round carbon molecules called fullerenes and nanodiamonds are also commonly found in these layers. Chemical analysis also revealed spikes in iridium, nickel, charcoal and soot concentrations. Now, volcanic activity, lightning strikes, coal fires, industrial pollution, cosmic impacts and various other things can create these tiny spheres. But Sonia Fernandez at the University of California says, To differentiate between impact spherules and those formed by other processes, the research team utilised scanning electron microscopy and energy dispersive spectrometry on nearly 700 spheral samples collected from the YDB layer. The YDB layer also corresponds with the end of the Clovis Age and is commonly associated with other features such as an overlying black mat, a thin dark carbon rich sedimentary layer, as well as the youngest known Clovis archaeological material and megafaunal remains, an abundant charcoal that indicates massive biomass burning resulting from impact. Many people are now pretty confident that something struck the Earth and exploded in its atmosphere around 12,800 years ago, causing the onset of the Younger Dryas. And this would have caused major catastrophes for many people and animals, and seemingly leading to the extinction of a number of large animals in North America especially, and including the abrupt end of the Clovis culture in North America. For example, a black mat at a site called Murray Springs in Arizona sits above a trove of Clovis artefacts, a fire pit, and an almost fully articulated skeleton of an adult mammoth. But above the mat, there are no such artefacts. So in the archaeological record, it looks like the Clovis people mysteriously and abruptly just vanished. However, some managed to retreat to the south over time, as it was found that people genetically linked to the Clovis culture made it down to South America as far back as 11,000 years ago, but mysteriously vanish again around 9,000 years ago from the DNA records. This seems to suggest a complete population replacement around that time, which sounds to me like some extreme migrations or something had to be going on for that dramatic change to occur. The soot and charcoal among the samples of the boundary also suggest the presence of mass wildfires. Some people estimate possibly up to 10% of the Earth's landmass on fire, and could well have been caused by fragments of a meteor or comet strike in parts of the continent set in sections of land ablaze. But until recently, the hypothesis of a cosmic impact hasn't really been taken very seriously, mainly due to no crater being found to match anywhere near that time period but teams mainly only searched North America for an impact crater, and ultimately came up empty. Due to the lack of a crater, some researchers in the field have previously suggested that the impactor may have already been fragmented when it entered the Earth's atmosphere, and smaller fragments would have done plenty of damage as they exploded in the atmosphere and over the retreating Laurentide ice sheet, but they wouldn't have left much of a smoking hole in the ground. So obviously finding a crater produced from the central mass of the impact to data to around that time would really strengthen the case and probably be the smoking gun. A similar process happened with the original hypothesis that an asteroid strike caused the event that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs, where the idea wasn't taken seriously for years until a crater was found dating to that period, and now it's widely accepted that an asteroid impact most likely did cause that extinction level event. Now, in November of 2018, there was a crater discovered in the north of Greenland, the centre of the crater being under a kilometre of ice, 
and so far with external analysis from pictures and scans that were taken, it appears that the crater may have possibly formed as recently as 12,000 years ago, which would be right on the money. But until further analysis, the current window of estimation is anywhere between 12,000 and 3 million years ago. So we really need to help drive the interest in this site so we can send a much needed expedition to drill to the centre of the crater to really see if it is the impact site and to accurately date its formation. The Greenland crater is big, 31 kilometres or just over 19 miles in diameter. It's theorised that a mile wide iron asteroid hit the Hiawatha Glacier travelling at around 12 miles per second to cause this crater. And according to data on all other impact sites we found on Earth, you have to go back at least 40 million years to find a crater of this size. So this is a rare occurrence for relatively recent history and would have caused much devastation and change to anything living on this planet at the time. Given the window of impact is anywhere between 3 million years and 12,000 years ago, it is indeed possible that this may have been the body that impacted the Earth and brought on the Younger Dryas climate catastrophe. However, we need those samples from the crater to more accurately date it before jumping immediately to conclusions. As so far, we only actually have a few pictures, aerial scans, a little bit of ground samples from outside the ice region, and early theories to go on. But because the impact hypothesis has garnered a lot of attention in the past decade through the accumulation of evidence that it seems like something big did actually happen to civilizations and the Earth around 12,800 years ago, then you can see why geologists and researchers are really eager to get their hands on the data. It also appears like much of the large Ice Age megafauna like mammoths, saber-tooths, giant sloths, giant beavers and various other creatures notable from the Ice Age era also went extinct around the same sort of time or soon after this event, starting in North America and Europe anyway, as for example some mammoths survived as late as 3,700 years ago on Wrangell Island off the northeastern coast of Siberia which I guess if the Greenland crater was the Younger Dryas impact, the effects may have reached this island. But then again, with 9,000 years between the start of the Younger Dryas and the extinction of the last isolated mammoths, they may have very well recolonized that island at a later time. And the warming of the climate would have actually forced them to migrate more north to seek a more suitable climate anyway, I guess. Even though the gradual extinction of predominantly megafaunal creatures started from around 130,000 years ago, this period being referred to as the Late Pleistocene, a small window at the end between 15,000 years and 10,000 years ago did actually see the greatest majority of extinctions. And obviously the Younger Dryas was in the middle of that period, sticking a spanner right in the works. Because of these findings also, there is still much debate about how exactly many of these animals were driven to extinction. And some didn't go extinct until a few thousand years after the event, and some before, but considering the extinctions of predominantly large creatures had been happening from about 130,000 years ago, and we know the Earth started a steady warming cycle around 15,000 years ago, reaching a temperature greater than any since nearly 120,000 years ago. So it does seem feasible that these creatures might have become extinct through humans hunting their already vastly thinning numbers in a changing climate. Getting that Greenland crater data is the next step anyway, so hopefully the find receives enough attention for an expedition to be funded to drill through that kilometre thick ice sheet hiding the centre of the crater. Then we'll be able to determine if it has any link with the Younger Dryas. As usual I'll be looking more into this over time and keeping my eyes peeled for any news on a much anticipated expedition hopefully to come soon. So what do you think? Are you already convinced that the crater is from the impact that kickstarted the Younger Dryas climate period? Do you think it's from a far older event? Do you think it's not even an impact crater? Or do you have another hypothesis? Please share your thoughts and any connections you've noticed in the comments. And as usual, check the description for some interesting links around this topic. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and take care of yourselves out there.